Windows can be moved by moving the pointer to the name of the window, holding down the mouse button, and dragging the window to a new location on the screen. You notice only an outline of the window moves until you release the mouse button. You make the window bigger or smaller by dragging the resize box at the bottom right corner of the window. If the window is too small to hold all the disk's icons, you can use these scroll bars at the right and at the bottom of the window to scroll through the window and look at its contents. To expand the window to full size, click the zoom box in the upper right-hand corner of the window. And then to reduce it back to its original size, just click it again. You can, of course, open more than one window. Let's do that. When we have more than one window open, you can move and resize them independently. If they overlap, you'll notice that one is in front of the other. That is the active window. Only one active window can be active at the one time, and you can tell the window is active because it has these stripes in the title bar. As you can see, you just click anywhere in the window to make it active. The active or front window is the window you're working with. You can't do much with the icons in a window unless that window is active. You may have noticed that some of the icons in this window look like little file folders. That's because that's what they are. You can use folders on your hard drive to organize your data files into categories. You also usually put each program you install on the hard drive in a folder of its own. When you open a folder, another window appears just like when you open a disk. You can have folders inside of folders as many levels deep as you want, and of course, the window you just open behaves like any other window. The system folder on your first Q drive partition stores all the parts of the system software. Inside the system folder are several files, like error message and express load, that are part of the system software and also folders which categorize the various parts of the system software. For example, there are control panel devices in the CDEVs folder, and there are typefaces or fonts in the fonts folder. And when you install new system components, you put them into the appropriate folder inside the system folder. Now we'll show you how to do some really useful things with the Finder. To make a new folder, First, open the window in which you want it to appear. Then select New Folder from the File menu. A new folder called Untitled will appear. If you have lots of icons in your window, you might have to use the scroll bar to find your new folder. To rename an icon, first click the icon to select it. We'll use this folder we just created, and we don't even have to click it because the finder automatically cl clicked it for us. So we just type the name we want to give it. We'll call this one budget, because we're going to put all our budget spreadsheets into it, and press the return key. Now, to delete an icon, just drag it to the trash can. Don't release the mouse button until the trash can turns black. Now the trash can is bulging, which indicates that there's something in it. We can open the trash can, just like any other icon, and see what it contains. There's our budget folder. If you decide not to delete the, the folder after all, you just click it and select Put Away from the File menu. And that puts it right back where it was. If you decide you do want to get rid of it, just do Empty Trash from the Special menu, and it's permanently gone now. If you put a folder into the trash, the computer deletes everything in that folder as well. But if you put a disk into the trash, it doesn't erase everything on the disk. The computer merely ejects the disk. To copy a file from one disk to another, just drag the icon from one window to another. The finder makes a copy. If you drag a folder, everything inside the folder is also copied. You can also drag an icon on top of a disk icon. This causes the file to be copied in that disk's main window, just as if you dragged it into that window. If we open it up, there it is. 
That's a shortcut because it saves you the step of having to open that window before you can copy the file into it. You can also copy an icon into a folder the same way. Either drag it on top of the icon like this or into the window itself. You can also copy an entire disk onto an enti uh, another disk by dragging a disk onto another and saying replace. And the copy begins. If you drag an icon from one window to another window on the same drive, the finder simply moves the file instead of making a copy. This is an icon for the application program called Apple Bowl. And it comes with System 6. It looks sort of like a handwriting on a sheet of paper, or maybe a diamond. Some programs like the Advanced Disk Utilities and the Archiver have their own custom icons, which sort of display what the program does. This is the Teach icon, and that program also comes with System 6. It still has the diamond shape, but it has a pencil writing on the sheet of paper. Chances are, if you see a diamond icon, it's probably a program that you can run. When you open an application icon, the Finder launches the program. You leave the Finder, and you begin using the other program, like this. When you're done using the application program, you just do Quit from the File menu, and you'll return to the Finder. This is a document icon. This one happens to be a teach document, but most documents look a lot like a sheet of paper with one corner folded down. When you double click a document, the finder will launch the program that created it and automatically open the document if the finder knows which program created the document. Many of the programs you buy or get from other sources will come with an icon file that you can put on your hard drive to tell the finder which documents go with which programs. If the finder doesn't know which program goes with a particular document, you'll get the infamous, an application can't be found for this document message. The finder has a lot of other features, too. We've only touched the basics. The QDrive Care and Feeding Manual includes detailed information on using the finder, including instructions for installing programs onto your hard drive. Your Q drive is very sturdy and requires very little physical maintenance. However, you'll want to back it up and optimize it regularly. Backing up the Q drive is the process of copying files from the hard drive to floppies in case of some problem with the hard drive. Now, hard drives are actually more reliable than floppy disks. However, since even the 52 megabyte Q drive holds the equivalent of 60 three and a half inch disks, you have a lot to lose if something does go wrong. The Apple SCSI card includes a simple backup program called Backup 2. However, you may want to invest in a good hard drive management system with a more flexible backup program. Hard drives are also subject to data fragmentation. Here's what happens. Say you save three files, the red, green, and blue boxes in this example. Now suppose you make the green file longer. The hard drive has to store the rest of the file in the first available free space, which is after the third file. So now when you ask the hard drive to read that second file, it has to read it in two parts. The same thing happens when you delete files and then save new files where the deleted files used to be. In the normal course of using your hard drive or any disk, your files will become more and more fragmented. Eventually, you may even start to notice degraded performance. A program called an optimizer rearranges the files on your hard drive for optimum performance. Most hard drive management systems include an optimizer. If you have an Apple II GS, we suggest the Salvation Supreme package. If you have an Apple IIe, we recommend EasyDrive. Other popular management utilities include Universe Master and Procell. We hope you've enjoyed watching this video, and more importantly, we hope it's made setting up and using your Q Drive easier. Thanks for watching.